Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This intro has been filmed after the project's finished. This is the Eventuri RS3 and you may have seen it on the channel before. If you haven't, we'll put some links up to it at previous events. Now I've got Bilal from Eventuri, who is my business partner. So we both co-own Eventuri. And we're gonna talk about why this car actually exists and why we have it. So Bill, do you wanna explain why we bought an RS3 and why we built it to such a level? Okay, so, um Two years ago, I think, we developed the initial RS3 intake for the facelift RS3. Um, that was when they just were coming out. Mm. Uh, people were just doing mold, stage one, stage two tunes. And we made our first intake for this car. It was good intake, worked really well, made decent gains over the stock airbox. But then, about a year after we released, I think, um, people started doing some really big power builds. And we were, I think we were the first to market with an intake for this car. Yeah, I think but, we were. Yeah, so after people started doing high power builds, the other intake companies started to bring their intakes out. And because they had the benefit of hindsight, so to speak, by seeing the higher powered uh, uh, versions, they brought out intakes with larger diameter tubes, mm -hmm. you know, big filters and that sort of thing. And, then everyone, what did they say, Bill, after they did that? Well, everyone assumed <laughs> that our intake suddenly wasn't good enough. And these bigger tube intakes and all this stuff was, uh, was superior. Although it's not necessarily the case because airflow, you know, needs a smooth path and you need to take into account the trajectory of the flow as well. Yeah. So, but anyway, cutting the story short, I... Did I take offence? No, I don't know if I... Yeah, I took offence. Yeah, yeah, screw it. I took offence. <laughs> and um, so we thought, okay, fine. Let's play that game. And so we bought this car specifically to develop the biggest intake I could possibly fit into the car. We retooled the, our filter for this car specifically. So I so basically... So you're the difference in house in Yeah, size. so that's the original uh, filter, well... AirPod size, which we use for the facelift RS3 and the original intake. Yeah. And then when we redeveloped it, it became this. Yeah, so, let, so I can just clarify, we have normally two filter sizes, that one and a smaller one than that. Yeah, so this yeah. one and a smaller one. And yeah. then we literally had to tool a whole new filter just <laughs> for the intake, just for this car we bought just for this project. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, a whole new uh, filter was designed for this housing, which is just for this car, um, because I uh, got upset. Basically. Okay, <laughs> right, so basically, the long and short of it is, Bilal got upset because people <laughs> said that his intake design wasn't working, so therefore we bought this RS3 and wanted to make it really high horsepower to show that the intake does work, and then we developed the intake to suit the big power build. So what I'm gonna do now is basically talk you th through what's been done to this on a base level. What I will do is put a link in the description so you can see what the actual spec is. So with the car bought, it was time to turn it into a beast and a high powered RS3 so we could really push the limits of the intake development. Uh, to do that, we needed a solid foundation and for that we needed to build the engine. For that purpose, we bought a spare engine, took the original one out and then we sent that to Tim Radley at race developments and he built a forged engine for us he's very well known for these engines got a very good reputation uh, so he forged the engine for us and he also did a set of his cylinder heads on this car with that done it was time to put the ims 850 kit on and the rest of the hardware including the csf intercooler and also the stage three intake
the engine that Tim Radley at Race Developments has built for us has been running and we're now ready to fit the IMS 850 kit. This kit did take quite a long time to come because that area has been quite affected by CV19, but we finally got it. And hopefully we can get this on and get the car ready for the next VMAX. So what do we have in this kit? Let's start with the heart of it, which is the Zona Rotor 8267 and it's a big boy. It's a full frame turbo, so it also has the turbo manifold. Zona Rotor are quickly gaining themselves a reputation as being one of the best turbo manufacturers out there. And the reason we've gone for the IMS um, 850 kit from IROS is that it's the most proven kit out there in terms of the performance figures we've seen. And we've talked to quite a few owners all around the world and they're very happy with the way the kit is performing. The name suggests that it should make 850 horsepower on a high octane setup, but we will find out shortly. That's probably based on dyno jet figures. Um, in the UK, depending on what dyno you're using, it could be less, but let's get a kit on set up and then we'll know from there. But generally speaking, the kit is really high quality. I mean, that manifold is excellent. Really nice merge collector in there, which is similar to the quality we see from Super Sprint also comes with its own downpipe in section one. That's the turbo inlet pipe. That's the even chewy one next to it. Um, so this is the first time we think that somebody is fitting one of these kits to a right-hand drive car. So we're not sure what's gonna fit and what's not going to fit. We can kind of tell that this is not going to fit and neither is that. So we're gonna have to either make a hybrid or design a new pipe that works with this kit on a right-hand drive car also comes with an external tile wastegate and this is all going to be controlled with the Cyvex unit and the reason we've gone for Cyvex is that we really want to go all out on this and we don't want the stock ECU limiting us and our friend Remain from Cyvex is going to help us set this up once it's all completed. So let's get this kit on the car, let's get it over to the dyno, tune it and see what power we can get out of it.
So with the IMS850 kit fitted and also the CSF intercooler, it was time to take the car for mapping. We were limited by the map sensors and the fuel pump, so we left the car at 1.6 bar and also as far as we were comfortable pushing the fuel pump. So you drove the car at that stage at 1.6 bar yeah. at VMAX. So what was your experience So that like? was my um, second outing at VMAX for this car. Previously it was with the um, 777 yeah, and stock ECU. So yeah, the difference was day and night. Um, at 1.6 bar we hit 202 miles per hour. Uh, it was really smooth to drive, aggressive through the RPM range. Uh, Romain did a great job at that stage. So, yeah, the, the difference was huge. Yeah. So with the shakedown done, it was time to fix the issue. So we fitted some new map sensors, uh, fitted a PAG parts fuel pump, and took the car back to remain at race cow so he could finish the job off. The second mapping session with Remain revealed another issue, and that was with the TCU. He started to get clutch slip at just under two bar, so we needed to fix the TCU issue. But at two bar, we did go to terminal velocity, and you want to tell us what the difference was like between driving 1.6 at VMAX and then the two bar? Yeah, so we managed to fix the TCU issue literally the morning of TV, um, and then at TV, it was really wet, uh, so we had to kind of wait for it to dry out a little bit before I went, you know, full send. However, when it did dry out and I went for it, it, it was incredible. The car pulled so aggressively. I think we hit in the half mile, even with, without launching it, 170 miles per hour. Yeah, and you did a 100, 200 of 5.01 yeah. without, try, without going for a yeah, run so and that's on still not full boost. Yeah, 5.01 in pretty bad conditions to be fair. I'm sorry, the torque was limited at that point. It was 1.6 bar to 2 bar taper, so the torque was limited to prevent the yeah, clutch Yeah, so Remain mapped the car to take into account clutch slip, yep. so it wasn't aggressively coming into boost. Mm. So even with that, it was, it was insane. The, the car shocked a lot of people. Getting ready for the third run. So far, haven't had a proper clean run. First run was in uh, auto and didn't want to shift up from fourth. Second run I did manual, but maybe I was a bit impatient and uh, went up from fourth, but didn't seem to shift quickly. So I did it again and went to fifth. So this time I need to nail it. Have to nail this one. Logging this and also next to a GTR. All right, but I'll come on. Nail this, getting hungry. Need a samosa with chutney. Yes! 
Nailed it. Killed the GTR as well. Totally gone. Totally. Where is he? There he is. Turn around, bro. Someone went to Gapplebee's. Right. I think I deserve a samosa after that. Definitely deserve a samosa. Uh, on one run in particular, I fluffed the start completely, upshifted twice, and the GTR just left me. Then I reeled him in and went past him, which was just insane. So, just finished the uh, lunch break. I'm back up now. Um, last run was good, just didn't get a log on the laptop. So, I've, um, we've reset that. So, hopefully, this time around we'll get a good log and then we can try and see if we can make some adjustments on the on the delivery of power, so I wonder how much power you're running. No, what? I broke the paddle. Huh? <laughs> I broke the paddle. Oh shit. Well, I don't know. I, I, you beat that GTR well, anyway. Well, I had a bad start. Yeah. Really bad start. But you overtook the GTR. After a while, yeah. Yeah. But I had a really bad start. Because okay. of the bat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whole thing just came out. I was like, what? The car raised a lot of eyebrows at TV, even at that stage. Um, it was just impressive all around. So yeah, so the TV out of the way, uh, running two bar, we'd fixed the TCU issue. It was time to go back for the third time and let Romain finish the job off. So we had an absolutely great shakedown with the RS3 at Terminal Velocity. It managed to do a 170 and a half mile in really wet conditions. When we were at Race Cal previously, Romain couldn't map the car to its full potential because we started to get clutch slip. So we resolved that by increasing the clamping pressure inside the TCU software. Now we're back at Race Cal, so Romain can really wind up the boost and get us ready for VMAX, which is on Saturday. So last time we were here, we were making 727 at the hub so we're hoping for a little bit more now pushing the boost up to 2.2 2.3 bar so let's see what results we can get out of it today
So we're in the Dynacell RS3 has just been tuned by Romain at Race Cal. So I'm just going to introduce him and talk about why we chose Cyvex and him to tune the car, where we were at terminal velocity and where we are now in terms of the power. So Romain, welcome to the channel. Thank you. It's good to finally do a project with you. Finally. So I've known Romain for about 11, 12 years. I think we met 2008. Yeah, I maybe. so, yeah. Because I had a Dynodynamics Dyna, we just set up business, we'd been going for about a year or two and he came with his friend to have a look at the dyno because they were looking to buy one themselves. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. And we gave them the demo on the dyno and we've basically been talking ever since. Yeah, ever since, yeah. Ever yeah since. We're not that close because we're based in Guildford, but yeah, yeah well, while we started working together. Yeah, so we were doing the OEM, BMW, yeah. the CU2, yeah, we were doing it for us. Yeah. For like 2010, yeah. for a few years. And we always joked about how come we've never worked together. So in this industry, I've got lots of friends and I always end up working on projects with them, but yeah. you kept eluding me because everything Cyvex made an ECU for, we didn't need it for our applications. And when you did, it was too late for us. Yeah, and every new car was like, oh, do you, are you doing something with the BMWs? No, and 54 was like, oh, we, don't, we don't really do anything with them. So yeah, we never really ended up doing anything together. Yeah, so then Final RS3 came finally. into our lives and we wanted to go well, full out on it. And then yeah. for us, the only choice was Cyvex, not only because of the control it has, because at the time we got it, it could do things like anti-lag, launch control, uh, map switching, flex fuel, traction control, traction control, obviously very important on this platform. And um, Romain was working for Cyvex at the time. I thought, hey, Romain, we could finally do a project together. So here we are, and it's turned into quite a good project. Yeah, and it's a good output as well. Yeah, so do you want to talk us through uh, the issues we had before we came um, at Terminal Velocity? which is a red line here, so you can see that's quite a bit lower. Yeah, so the issues that we had when we started increasing the boost, especially in the mid-range, we just just starting to have a bit of, uh, of clutch slip. And the, the TCM is very clever, because as soon as you're going to see a, a bit of clutch slip, it's going to do a, a torque limitation request, then the Cyvex C, and then it pulls the timing down, or fuel cut, or whatever it needs to do to reduce the power. Um, and that, that's normally down to the TCM or the clutches or the gearbox. Obviously on your car, stock clutches, stock gearbox, stock everything, yeah. apart from the engine. Apart from the engine. <laughs> um, but in terms of gearbox, everything stock. Uh, apart from the TCM that you had, which was not made for the kind of power they were going to push. Yeah. And obviously you find limit on the dyno and then you walk with them and you push further. Yeah. Um, so we decided to just leave it like this, limit the torque, as you can see, the torque is fairly flat actually coming up with the RPM. And same with the boost. So the red one is the power and torque that you had uh, for terminal velocity. So the, the boost actually starts at about 1.6, 1.7, uh, and then peaked just above 2 bar. And then last time we went to VMAX, we were running 1.6 bar. 1.6 bar, 1. yeah. 1.6 bar, and we did 202. 202 was it, Matt? 202 miles an yeah, hour. 202 so. the, the first time. So, yeah, this time is the third time on the dyno. Yeah. The first time we had an issue with the fuel pump. Yes. Uh, which was stock at the time. It was, yeah. Yeah, so we wanted to see how far we could push it. Uh, obviously, limited very quickly yeah. uh, with the SNL. Uh, but yeah, 1.6 bar. Was why the fuel pressure was too low, uh, and you did 202. So now, so yeah, we limited the the boost to two bar. And now we are at 2.55. 2 yeah, yeah. 2.5 on the glory run. Uh, we are reaching the limit of the injectors now. Yeah. So you're gonna uh, dial it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're probably gonna turn it down to 2.3, 2.4 bar, uh, which is still very good power anyway. Uh, that should be enough to max out the gearbox, hopefully. So we made on the high 2.5 bar 791 at the hubs. Is that correct? Yeah. So then when we were at 2.3 bar, which was what we're going to race with, what, what power we're going to make? Seven, 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 fourteen. Seven, fourteen. Yeah, so this one's at the okay. one there. Cool. Yeah. So seven, that's 14. what we're going to go to VMAX with. Uh, probably probably we'll a bit more. A bit higher than more. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so torque will be flatter. Yeah. I would say. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 714 is what the yeah, limited one 715, is. Yeah, 715, I would say VMAX probably is that one. That one, yeah. Okay. That one. Yeah. Just, you can see it's from one bar less. less yeah. uh, so mid range is about 2.2, top end 2.4, nice and flat torque curve, 
with over 600 foot pound from 4.5 to 7,000 RPM. Yeah. Then you start to drop a bit more after 7,000 RPM, but peak power is still. So essentially, we're going to VMAX with 0.7 more bar than we were. Yes, yes, that's correct. And we did 202. Yeah. So we're expecting. A bit more. A bit more. A little bit, a little so bit two more. Or three. Two or three. <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. It's going to um, be good. Yeah, the main thing is obviously we, we know we don't have the restriction on the gearbox. So the, the difference, I mean, there, if you just click there, but if you just look at the difference between here and there, the boost can come up much more aggressively. Yeah. And you can see. It's a very, very flat option. Yeah, it's very flat and it's just, it, it will pull harder. Obviously, when you're at VMAX, you're going to change gear around there so it doesn't really matter but in terms of drivability if it was a street car being used on the street as well the yeah. difference would be even more okay. impressive but the 60 to 130 should be uh, should be good now cool so this is the third time hopefully this is the last time yeah. not, in a, not in a bad way but no, yeah, no, 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 bad the way, car yeah. is now done and we can actually go and well, we, we, and we'll, be, we'll be with you on, on Saturday anyway yeah. um, we'll see for track support so cool. we'll see we'll see there when uh, we want to push it, and if we can push it further, because we might be able to run the 791. Yeah, I don't know. If we can but I can run that one to do some draggy. Yes, That's yeah, right. yeah, 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 just yeah. for drag, it's fun, yeah. Okay. It's more like VMAX is yeah, obviously very, it's very hard, hard on the car. car. Yeah, it's the hardest thing that you can do on a car, so. So yeah, thank you for all your support on this, and no your reason. knowledge with the Cybex and the tuning. I think we've got really good result. I want to thank everyone who's involved with the build, to be fair. Tim Radley's done a really good engine, IMS. 850 kit from IROS, CSF with the intercooler, and of course our intake that doesn't make any power, according to people. Yeah. It's limited to 600 horsepower, right? Well, <laughs> no. clearly, clearly. So, 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 so the thing is, talking about restriction and, and your airbox, actually, that's a very good point because you can see that there's no restriction as of yet. If we had the fuel and if we had. Um, if you wanted to run more boost, the increase in power and boost is always there. Even mm -hmm. very little increment. Yeah. If you look at the yellow and the blue, you're talking 0.1 of a bar. And you can see that much of a bar yeah. is you're picking up yeah, another, another 30, 40 30 brake yeah. at the wheels every time. And you increase the boost and it's more mm -hmm. and more and more and more. If the turbo starts to be a restriction, the intercooler starts to be a restriction, the airbox, air filter, whatever, you increase the boost and you're like, ah, it's not happy anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can see it. You've got the data with the Cyrex, which is very good. Everything is live. You can do everything instantly. If I want to change something, you can do it during the run, after the run. You can do run after run and repeatability, as yeah. we can see there. Is there. And the airbox is nowhere near the limit. Yeah. So, yeah, it's and it that's with the scoop there on the dyno, so it's, the car is yeah. not even moving. It will probably be even better on the road. Yeah, yeah, on the road, yeah, sure. 100 percent. Which is normally what you see anyway with the yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So when we if we log the car on the dyno, we look at the IATs and then compare them to the road. It's always a lot lower on yeah. the road, and sometimes the dyno uh, may only show like say 15, 20 horsepower gain, but when we do a draggy test, it can show 0.4 second difference, which realistically is more than. More than that much yeah. horsepower. Yeah, cool. All right, so yeah, I think that's a wrap. Yeah. Um, let's see how we get on at VMAX. Hopefully, we can take the RS3 record. Would be nice. Would be nice. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, we'll see how we go next year as well. See if we can get some more out. Yeah, it would be uh, if we can take it on the drag strip as well. Yeah, if I, I think if uh, they do it another stand up one day, that would be, that'd be good. Yeah, because I think that would be fast as well. Cool. Okay, cool. Perfect. Social distance, fist bump. <laughs> Thanks. No worries. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you'd like to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you'd like to watch what YouTube suggests you might like from our other videos, you can watch that over here. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comment section and we'll do our best to answer them for you.